just camp. Well, here's my plunger. See, plunger. Not hooked up, so I'm not doing any VPX today. Uh, but Joe, why is your plunger not hooked up? It's a cool plunger. It's, it's the real deal. There's no electronics, so it's not going to work with the virtual cabinet. Um, just a bit of history. Keep in mind, I am not sponsored by Zeb Ford or anything. Um, I just happen to like what he does, and so I spend my money to get all of these versions. Um, I was on board when he first introduced the version 1. Um, he was printing miniatures with a fairly thin fill, so you can see where I've done my cobbled together, um, I added some putty, and then you know made it reinforced that way, fix a problem with the braking. Um, the other thing that is the original one is it just used pure friction to hold the plunger into the uh, potentiometer lock. So again, you know, it just goes here, and I just put a bit of putty in there to hold that in place. Worked good enough, but being the ham-fisted tech guy I am, um, I pulled this out. Now, that should be a, fee a relatively easy fix. I should have just said, hey, you know what? I'm going to get a, a, you know, fix this plug and do it. But when I found that, I found out that Zeb had released a version two. So I reached out to him and being a previous customer, he worked me a bit of a deal and he sent me the version two. Now, one of the couple improvement things, uh, first off, he reinforced these holes, so I used this just fine, no problems with it breaking. Um, he also reinforced these, uh, with the wire leads. So here, it's actually locked in place, so it's not gonna pull off the board. I didn't have any problems with it locking, uh, pulling off the board, but I could see where somebody might. So it's nice to have that secured. Um, and then, the point where I pointed out how the plunger was held in place with friction. So here, you get the same thing, it slides onto the potentiometer, but this one also has a lock. So the lock goes on, you put the plunger in there, and then this lock snaps into place and keeps it locked. Now, that particular lock I actually have a little bit of issue with because of how tight I built the tolerances under my game pad here. Um, that runs into the wire coming off of my flipper switch. I'm gonna have to rebuild my whole cabinet. Now again, being heavy handed, um, again, I pulled out this connector cord. Part of it, part of the issue is that when I built my cabinet, the part running all the electronics is a sensor that has uh, connectors for all the buttons, it has your nudge sensor in it, um, and all the controls plus the uh, uh, USB connector is in the middle of my cabinet, which is just about exactly the length of this cable. Um, so as soon as I bump it, it causes stress. And while Zeb did a good job reinforcing this part here, I still managed to pull it out inside there. Um, so I'm like, okay, I can fix this. And I looked on Zeb's website, and it turns out he now has version 3. And I could either do a free repair, um, something time-consuming um, that I'm likely to break again, or I could go for version 3. And, well, you know, as you can see from what I'm holding the hand, I reached out to Zeb, and again, given our history, he gave me a little bit of a deal. I, I showed up at the shop, paid cash in hand, so there's no shipping, and we sat and we talked. The guy is awesome. If you get a chance to talk to him, his name's Steve. Um, he really enjoys pinball. Um, just all around guy, a nice guy. Uh, has a lot to say. But you'll notice here, there's no potentiometer. Um, that's because it's actually in a separate part with the control board built right in. Now, I, I did check this runs underneath this does not interfere with any of my wires. Um, so now I don't have to worry about running the cable that I pulled out on the last two versions. That makes me really happy. Um, there's also physical adjustments. So these are for the nudge sensor, so the X and the Y axis. So I can actually get in there and physically adjust the sensitivity 
for my nudging. So once I get it calibrated on the system, if I, I need to do a quick tweak, I don't want to go into the firmware and do another update, right there, I can do that. And the other cool thing is the USB connector. This is not likely to pull out. I've got a longer USB cable that'll go all the way back. Um, I don't anticipate this pulling off the board. I mean, this is on here quite solidly. Um, and on top of that, I'll, I'll use a proper tie to tie off the side of the cabinet when it goes down so there's no stress that gets put on it. Um, all of these, I have the connectors already. They're the same ones for the existing box. So I'm literally going to pull off the connectors from my existing box and then just plug them in here and I'm going to be good to go. Um, this does just slide right back into there. And then there's a little locking screw that goes in there to hold it in place. It's a uh, held in place with a part so if you look you can see this little brass um, thread in there so it's reinforced so I'm not expecting to have that come apart on me that'll be pretty nice um, but anyway so that's gonna be there makes this putting this part on a lot easier a lot more secure and I can see he's reinforced the holes here even further so I, I do expect this to be a nice rugged long-lasting thing that I haven't yet installed going to take a bit of work I'm thinking I'm talking about rebuilding the whole control panel here so this was meant to be short-term the this um, vinyl topping is pretty junky I'd like to have something a bit prettier um, I still want to have the lock bar the lock bar has always been an important part to me so uh, anyway so that's it and and oh yeah to lock it on he's maintained the exact same locking mechanism from version 2. So what I'm probably going to do is, given the, the extra size of this, I'm probably just going to use this with the putty solution that I used from the version 1, because that worked for me really, really well. Um, but that'll be all put together. It'll go down. It's going to work for me. Yeah. Anyway, enough advertising for Zeb's board. Um, you say, Joe, why don't you do a LED Wiz? Or, um, and the fact of the matter is, I hate soldering. I really hate soldering. I, I know how to do it. Um, it. It takes time. And as you can see from the other cables there, I'm a little bit heavy handed with the physical part of things. I mean, I can do my code and get stuff working, but. Um, I don't, how can I say this? I, 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 I want to spend as little time as possible having to do manual construction type stuff. I want, I want to plug in um, and for the price of the Zebs board and for what you get and the quality of it, that's been the way to go for me. So um, anyway, uh, today I'm just going to play some, uh, what's it called? I'm playing uh, Pinball FX3 because it wasn't wired up to the plunger anyways. Um, I, I, I find with the uh, VPX, I always wanted to use my plunger. I was like, oh yeah, I get the plunger. And uh, I do have this button rigged up to be the plunger, so I could play the games if there's something I wanted to play. Um, but it just doesn't feel right. Um, it, it, it's, it's weird that I'm okay playing Pinball FX3 with the launch button um, and I guess there's a number of games that use the launch button instead of the, the plunger that I could also play but I, I've been neglecting the FX3 um, there's some tournaments going on I haven't played those so uh, 